Hello again and welcome back to another one of my loose watercolour painting um, videos. So today we're going to be painting puffins, two different varieties, and this must be my favourite bird ever. I think I have done countlets of uh, watercolour paintings on puffins, mainly because I work on an expedition ship which goes to the far-flung places up in the northern uh, Atlantic where you have this type of Atlantic puffin. I'm going to be starting off with uh, just mixing some of my colors. This is a, a turquoise color on my palette. And what I've used here is the, a hot pressed paper, 300 grams, so it's very smooth. Wetting just this specific area prevents the paint from flowing out of that area and to somewhere else in the painting. So uh, it basically contains the, the watercolor in that specific spot. And using the extra paper just to prevent the splatters from going all over the, the puffin itself and only onto the outer areas that I want. So this, I want this to be nice and loose and free and if you've watched any of my other videos you will know that I just love the splattering effect and you will see a lot more of that coming up. But also trying to move away from the real traditional colors so I like the fact that instead of the gray underneath the tummy for the shadow areas that I've decided to use a type of turquoise, turquoise blue color and by putting the color underneath his belly towards the feet gives it that belly that, that sort of type of roundness that you want to get in the little chest of the of the puffin and also repeating that color to outside the painting into the background just so that the color doesn't stand out in a big sort of harsh color saying look at me look at me you know I, I want the color to be balanced and in different areas of the painting so this is very much a real-time demo and it's going to take maybe a little bit longer than my others so if, if you really would like to see step by step this, uh, watch the video right through to the end. I will be doing two different paintings, both of them on puffins. And so that you can see the one will be on the water and the other one, uh, this, this is the other one standing on the grass. But I've decided although they are on grass often because they actually live in burrows or they nest in burrows, uh, during the breeding time and you have quite often see them on like a greenish grass but I just feel it's a little bit sort of unnatural looking for the painting to have green suddenly at the bottom so I am not going to be adding the green to um, to this painting you know as an artist you can do what you like it's your artistic license to decide whether you want to um, put in the exact colors, be realistic or not. Uh, even if my whole puffin had been pink and purple, as long as the values are pretty much correct, then it, it doesn't matter what colors they are. So this is basically a license to do whatever you want to do and whatever you feel like doing. Of course, the thing that really stands out of the puffin is this just gorgeous colorful beak um, that that is really what sets it apart and call, they also called the parrots of the sea but I don't know if you know this but they don't keep that colorful beak color all year round so in the winter months when they are at sea they lose the color in the beak and only at breeding time when they're trying to attract a mate does the coloring come back into the beak. Puffins of course don't live on shore all year round. They do nest in burrows or on on cliff edges if there's not enough uh, soil or, or um, 
sort of burrow material available, they they will nest on cliff faces. And in the north, uh, these are the North Atlantic puffins. You find them pretty much in the northern Arct sort of Arctic area, Norway, Svalbard, which is where I've seen all my or most of my puffins has been in Svalbard, which is north of Norway. But Iceland apparently has at least 60% of the puffin population in the world. But you could find them in Ireland or Wales, Scotland. I've seen them in Scotland. And the first time I saw them, I was actually surprised on how small they actually were. I, I somehow had envisioned them to be a, a lot larger bird, but they are the cutest, cutest little birds uh, imaginable. You know, when, when <laughs> it's it's honestly it's one of my absolute favorites definitely my favorite when it comes to the um, northern hemisphere so the dark that I'm putting in here is actually indigo it's not it's not black I don't really use black not that I'm um, against it if uh, anyone wants to use it and it can come in useful um, to a lot of uh, paintings uh, paints gray or, or black can definitely be useful but this is uh, indigo, it's a Daniel Smith watercolor, so it's a really pretty dark indigo. And I'm basically, I have to, I, well I go, I go over the same layer again and again. So as it dries, I might make it a little bit darker again, because watercolor always dries slightly lighter and depending on the type of brand you use but as you're painting with wet paint it looks darker and then it dries a, a lot lighter so you you tend to have to come back and and put another layer on but that's also what makes watercolor special if it was just a one layer thing it wouldn't have the same depth uh, that you would get by just putting a flat it would be more like a poster I guess like a poster painting by putting and adding these extra little layers all the time and going over and putting another layer and a slightly darker layer that's what that's what builds up the the sort of character of the of the watercolor the eyes of the puffin are also unique they really are red at the top they've got this gorgeous sort of eyeliner look and then the little black eye um, they have the most wonderful comical type of look to them but uh, they are extremely extremely um, good fishes so they they dive into the water they are excellent at catching catching fish and they have this really unique bill there's um, where the like little yellow dot is on the hinge of the bill they can unhinge or the the bill hinges in a different way so if they have a lot of fish in their mouth and they close the bill that that doesn't cut all the fish in half and then they only go back to the nest or whatever with with half the amount of fish so the the bill closes at an angle so not to cut the fish in half and that like little gape at the side of their of the the bill is where that happens and that's a very unique feature of the um, of the puffin slowly slowly just adding more color all the time S slightly stronger I have decided with the sort of black and white feel of the of the puffin just because these are the sort of unique colors you see of them and although my chest is turquoisey it's still very recognizable as the the puffin colors there you can see the yellow the little yellow gape that I am painting there 
I'm also not the type of artist that will paint every single feather. Uh, I have nothing against it. I think some paintings that uh, are very detailed with all the feathers can be absolutely exquisite. And I admire the artists that do it. But it's just not the style that I do things in. I like um, an, an overall shape and picture, not zooming in on every particular feather. I also like to paint lots of different things. And I think if I concentrated on one bird with every single feather, it would take me far too long. I'm very much a sketcher. Something has to happen quite quickly. I like to see the impression quickly. And um, that's just the way I prefer it. Adding a little bit more detail on the legs as well, just to give them uh, a bit of character. And just wash at the bottom of the puffin. It's it's like a just an idea of a type of shadow or idea that it's not floating. Just having something for the puffin to stand on just prevents that floating look. And a bit of reflection from the orange red color uh, onto the belly. It's just a bit of uh, reflected light. Always gives it a slightly more real realistic uh, feel to that. And then the little white in the eye is with my jelly roll which is a, a, a number 10 jelly roll. I think they're made in Japan. Um, just to add the little highlight in the eye. But I'm going to be doing something completely different. This is now a painting that I'm going to be doing from one of my watercolor paintings. This particular photograph was taken in Svalbard, which is uh, north of Norway. It's a group of islands that is um, up, way up in the Arctic, in the Atlantic Sea. And there are some cliffs there that have, uh, that have the puffins that we normally take our guests to go and have a look at. And the one day we were doing a zodiac exploration, so it's basically a trip on uh, these sort of rubber inflatable boats. And it was just, the sea was just full of puffins around, uh, around the boat. They were coming towards the boat and flying over us. And it, it was just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, something that I really won't, won't forget. So I took quite a lot of these photographs. And then did the painting, but I, I feel the, pa the painting that I did was a little bit stiff looking. It didn't seem to have the movement. Uh, the, pa the painting has subsequently sold, as have all my other puffin paintings. There's something about them that people just absolutely love. Um, but so this over here, I wanted to try a completely different effect, a very loose, watery, runny type of effect um, to see if it would fit into its background a little bit better. So the reason I was north of Norway in Svalbard, up in the Arctic Ocean, is that I work as artist in residence on a ship for four to five months of the year. At the moment, we are all housebound or homebound or country bound, should I say, due to COVID, unfortunately. So no traveling um, available or allowed anywhere. Uh, so I live in South Africa, so it is very difficult to go anywhere else in the world. And during this pandemic, you actually don't want to. So uh, I'm quite happy to be at home at the moment, but I certainly miss going to these wide flung areas. Um, as I say, I'm artist in residence on the ship. So whenever the 
the ship has a, a sea day or it's like extreme bad weather outside and we can't um, offer a landing, I would very often offer a, a watercolor workshop for the guests on board. It's not a huge cruise ship at all. We only have about a hundred passengers and it's people that really want to go to unusual different type of places, people that love bird life, they love nature, sea life, uh, hiking, kayaking, very much sort of adventure things and also where you want to get away from these huge big cruise ships that have maybe 2,000 people on or I think there's one with even 4,000 people on. So it's nothing like that at all. It's a very small, uh, interesting, interesting little ship where the entertainment um, is offered in the sense of lectures. So we have uh, geologists, ornithologists, historians, just really interesting people on board where I learn so much from and I think the guests coming on board learn a huge amount of uh, things from these very um, informative and studied people. We offer trips ashore wherever possible. We go out in these rubber inflatables and cruise around um, maybe in areas where there's glaciers so a bit of ice floating around. It is cold, uh, not as cold as down south in Antarctica, but it, it, it's pretty cold. And uh, as long as you dress warmly, there's no such thing as, you know, the, the thing is if you have the right clothing, that's, that's all that matters. And as long as you dry underneath, you have your layers, it's, it works tremendously well. And I mean, this is coming from a girl that is born under the African sun <laughs> and lived in Africa most of my life to actually work up north in a really cold area um, and down south in fact as well. It was not something I had thought I would ever do and when the opportunity came along I grabbed it with both hands just because it's so unique and I just love wildlife, I love traveling and the opportunity to see these different birds and landscapes and the opportunity to paint them. I have got sketchbooks full of uh, the sketches I do when I'm there. If you have the time, look back on one of my earlier vi videos, I have got a few on Antarctica, sketchbooks of uh, the various things I've painted in Antarctica, as well as the Arctic, a sketchbook tour. Have a look at those if you are at all interested in what type of thing I do and the type of sketches that I did while I was there. Again, just painting the detail in the eye and um, a hint of the feet underneath the water not forgetting that so it doesn't um, look like it has any feet at all. And I do, here I'm actually, the beak ended up getting a little bit too red, the red spread across the whole beak so what I've done is on this smooth paper which again was the 300 gram hot press paper it tends to lift quite easy when you go over one section with a damp brush. The brush must not be soaking wet, otherwise it will spread all over. So I would wet the brush, dab it on a paper towel, and then just rub in one spot where you want to lift the color and then dab it with a paper towel again. And if you do that two or three times, you, the color lifts off quite easily and then give it a little bit of time to dry before you add the color that you want to put in there. 
so I would have added a slightly yellow yellow color as the puffins do have in their beaks and it just gives that definition I felt the background wasn't quite strong enough and I wanted to use a type of bamboo straw that I've got to give it a bit of texture and again dabbing with water or going with my so-called thirsty brush and taking out excess water so a thirsty brush is basically a brush that is damp but all the moisture has been pressed out with a paper towel and then you go over a really soggy wet area and you would pull up that excess water this is actually better to do it that way than with a paper towel because it doesn't damage the fibers of the paper but I tend to use both so um, either, either way is fine as long as you don't scrub with a paper towel you're not really going to to damage it and just adding a bit of the yellow to the water to the background that's also in the beak just helps balance the colors in different areas so that you don't just have the one color that's very stark and sitting in one area and not forgetting the bit of reflection of the dark indigo in the water in the ripples of the water the water doesn't have any ripples yet so instead of what I could do is I could come in with a white gouache and paint in white but I think it, what is best is to go in with uh, a thirsty brush as well and uh, uh, and just try and take some of the color out also adding the darker will give the variety and ripples in in the waters so this is exactly what I'm doing is just mopping up some of the areas or trying to lift out some of the colors and voila here is the puffin a lot looser and more jovial than the stiff one I had done about two years ago